Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Murano, which is the latest game from married design duo Inca and Marcus Brand, who previously brought us the excellent, excellent village. And now they are setting their sights to the Venetian Isle of Murano, which is one of the most well-known meccas in the world for the fine art of glass blowing. Jen and I, we've actually been there in real life. It's a neat place. Although, actually, Jen has some mixed reviews about the island of Murano. But that's neither here nor there because I'm going to be doing a run-through of the game that actually chronicles the growth from almost nothing to becoming the international mecca of glass one. And in this game, each player is a local... A uh, businessman or woman, an entrepreneur, trying to build this island up from what starts out as just basically a bunch of lumps of mud sticking out of the water into a very, very successful enterprise. Okay. Or industry, really. The glass industry of Murano. All right. So, at the beginning of the game, everybody starts with five bucks, five victory points, and five gondoliers. Five, five, and five. And... Um, that's really about it. Uh, you know, uh, the, the game is set up. There's gondolas all around the board. These gondolas, or I should say, this track around the board is effectively a gigantic rondelle where we will be you know, activating different actions by picking up and moving those gondolas. And let's see, I'm, I'm also I'm playing a two-player game today. I'm the orange player. Jen's the white player. So I'm on the two-player side of the board. If you were to flip this board, the uh, other side has a whole other island, which I think you use for four players. I think this is the two, three-player side, and the other side is the four-player. So you have more real estate to build on. All right. Let's stop talking. Let's start playing. I am the first player, and so I shall go. Now, what you do on your turn, you pick up any gondola you want, and you move it, and wherever you put it, that's the action you do. Now, you can actually pick up multiple gondolas, because maybe there's a gondola on the space that you want. You can move it out of the way, and then move another gondola there to actually do the action you want. But, because you always you pick up a gondola and you move them counterclockwise. But if you do that, if you want to move multiple gondolas on one turn, you have to pay money. And money can get super duper tight in this game. But at the start of the game, you know what? I'm, I'm not going it's, to... It's a pretty easy opening move. I'm going to pick up this gondola. And you always pick them up. You move them counterclockwise. Now, they can't move into a space with another gondola. So this creates a wall. So picking up this gondola, this is the only place it could go. And I will do this action. And now what is this action? This lets me get an objective card. This is the deck of special important personages who will show up in Mur at Murano at the end of the game and potentially score victory points. And so I've come here. The first of the... Whenever, when I get my first card, it costs me one buck. If I want to get a second objective card, the second one costs me two bucks. The third one costs me three bucks and so on. So I'm going to have to pay one buck. Or is it a florin? Uh, or I forget what the money is. Or one coin, one buck, and I draw three and keep one. So, now this is all secret. Nobody knows what I'm choosing from here because this will be a secret objective that I'll, only I have. Let's see here. Now this one. Two victory points for every glass factory on an island. If I take this, I want to make sure one of these one, two, three, four, five islands has a lot of glass factories on it so I can score two points per. And this is actually... Uh, let's see. Only you have glass factories. It, you receive 12 points, just a flat 12 points, if you are the only player to have a glass factory on an island. Now, that's a bit trickier to do because you know these are public islands. Anybody could build here. This one could be a very simple goal that I just want to keep on building glass factories and score this. This one is just instantly 12 bucks, but... You know, Jen could unwittingly, you know, I, I might have my island and then late in the game, Jen might build another glass factory and then suddenly, boom, I can't do this one. And now this one, if there is an island that has a red building, a gold building, two red customers, and a gray customer, if there is an island like that, so I'd have to make sure I build stuff so that that happens, at the end of the game, I can convert my excess money into victory points. Normally, at the end of the game, your money is worth nothing. I think it's a tiebreaker. Uh, but other than that, it's not worth anything. But this thing can convert money into points if I get the right combination of stuff on an island. So that's a big if, because these are communal islands. You could make a plan, you could go for it, but you can find yourself blocked. This one, I think, is the trickiest, which is why it's a guaranteed 12 points. I mean, Jen could just stomp all over that anytime she wants, so I don't think I'm going to chase after that one. So, do I want to just build a lot of glass factories, or do I want to try to create this combo and then make a lot of money? Uh, you know, so I, up to eight bucks I could trade in for twelve points. I think I'll go for the glass factory one. So I am definitely going to be in the glass factory business. Now these other ones, they just go to the bottom of the deck, 
And that was it. That was my first turn. I picked up, I moved, I activated a thing, and I got myself a secret objective which stays face down, but I'm going to keep it face up so I can remember about it. All right, now it is Jen's turn. Jen would very much like to get a secret objective herself, but the space is blocked. If she wanted to pick up a gondola and move in here, she would first have to pay money to move these other gondolas out of the way. And again, money is tight. There's actually two places you can get secret character objective cards, this one and this one, but now they are both blocked. If Jen wanted to, she could move this out of the way and then spend one buck, so she could get, she could get a character card for two bucks. One to move a gondola out of the way and one to get it, but I think instead Jen's going to go a different route. She's going to pick up this gondola and move over here. Now, this space costs her two bucks, but it's the only one on the board. Jen has, this is the only way you can get special buildings, although it costs Jen two bucks to do it. She spent two of her starting five, and she gets a special building. All right. Now, when Jen eventually gets this built on one of the islands, the reward for most of the time, the reward for building a building is one victory point, two victory points, or three victory points. But if you build a special building, your reward is you get a special power card that you can use for the rest of the game that can give you a lot of flex flexibility. So Jen's trying to get herself a special power. Okay, now it's my turn again, and I would love to go there, but again, now if I want to go there, I'd have to move this out of the way, and then pay one to move that out of the way, and then pay two to move this in, so it would cost me three bucks to get that, plus two bucks to buy it. I've only got four bucks, so I'm certainly not going to do that. But what I think I'm going to do, I know I want to build a lot of glass factories, so let's get working on that. I will pick up this gondola and go to one of the two spaces on the rondelle that lets me get a glass factory. It costs me one buck. And I've now got a glass factory. Okay, there we go. Now it's Jen's turn again. Let's see. So now she would like now to get the to get the secret power card. She has to build this. There are three places you can go to build. You can come here, although it's blocked. You can come here, which is wide open, or you can come here, which is wide open. But when you go to one of these build spaces, you can build up to three tiles. So it's kind of wasteful for Jen to go there and only build one building. She should try to get at least one more building. So what will she do? I think... Um, let's see. Well, there's, there's four types of buildings you can get. Jen's already gotten a red building she's going to build. She'd love to get another one so she can get two special powers. But again, it's all blocked up. Now, she could come here and get a palace. And that just basically scores points. It's the most valuable to build a palace. is worth three points. So she could build that. She could come over here and pay a buck to get a glass factory. She just saw me get a glass factory. Maybe she should grab one of her own. Um, she could come over here or over here to get a shop. And shops, you need to set up shops so you can sell to customers. That's another way to make points. And a lot of the objectives have to do with shops as well. But you know what? Since Jen just saw me grab a glass factory, I think she's going to grab one too. Whoop! So she's moved here. It costs her one buck. And now she can build a glass factory also. All right. Now I should say, you'll notice this gondola is a little bit different. It's red instead of all the other ones, which are black. Now, normally, you treat this like any other gondola in the game. There's nothing special about it. But one of the secret powers you can get, if, if you get the, the, the special power, you can actually treat this as a special gondola with game-breaking rules. I won't worry about that, though, unless either Jen or I get that. So basically, you can just pretend this is a black gondola unless that special power comes out. All right, so anyway. So Jen, she grabbed a glass factory as well. Now it's my turn. And I'm like, well, I would have liked to have grabbed that, and that's why Jen did it. This game can actually be pretty vicious if, if players want it to be, if they can intuit what the other player is trying to do and they actually make moves to block and stuff like that. But anyway, so... So Jen has basically stopped me from getting it. Um, I only have three bucks left. I think what I'll do is I'll pick up this gondola and slide over here and go to this space. This is a space that just gives you two bucks. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but again, money is tight, tight, tight. And so now I'm back up to my starting capital of five bucks. Okay, now it's Jen's turn again. I think now that she's got two buildings, I think it's time to build. This building space is blocked, so she could move this over here. And that clears, and if she does, then that clears this up. And hey, I could go get another glass building. Or, but I don't think she's gonna do that. She's gonna move this one over here. Because she, you know, she has nothing to go on. It's just a hunch. But she saw that, hey, I got a secret objective, and then the very first thing is I tried to get a glass house. So Jen is guessing, 
and correctly that I want to get glass factories. And so that's why Jen is not going to clear this one out. She's going to clear this space out instead and go to a building space. Now, actually, I'll look at this one because it's closer to the camera. When you go to a building space, you can build one, two, or three tiles on one island. If you build a glass factory, it's worth one point. If you build a shop, it's worth two points. A palace is worth three points. And a special building gives you a, 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 a special card. Now, Jen's got two tiles. But in addition to whatever tiles you have, remember you can build one, two, or three tiles. In addition to these tiles, you can also build a one street tile. And there's a whole bunch of them. They're all randomly chosen. Uh, Jen will choose this one. Okay, and this is a street tile that brings with it a gray customer. So Jen, now these are the, and these, these street tiles don't cost anything, but you can only grab one when you come to a build action. You can see, um, and building a street tile doesn't get you anything. But you have to build street tiles because Jen can't just put, the, see, the, these cobblestones are the, space, are the spaces for street tiles. And these darker spaces are the spaces where buildings go. You can't just put buildings down willy-nilly. You have to put buildings on a street. So this would not be legal. But say if Jen puts this street here, she now has has two legal spots where she can build her two buildings. And those would be the three tiles she built. One, two, three. A street which, which brings a customer. So now um, San Pietro uh, uh, Mar Martire, Mar Martire, I have no idea. San Pietro Martire is an island where we want to set up shops that sell to gray customers. So now Jen could have set this up on any island, but since she doesn't have any objectives, she doesn't really have a good, she'll just put it here arbitrarily. So she put her street down, which did nothing for her. Now, she, on that street, she put her glass factory, and she'll mark it with her little marker, so it's hers. That got her one victory point, and she put down a special building. Now, special buildings don't belong to anybody, so she won't mark that, but building a special building gives her, gives her a special power. So she draws three and keeps one. All right, a studio, a guild hall, and an assembly hall. So Jen gets one of these. So basically what we're saying is this building is either going to be an assembly hall, a guild hall, or a studio. Jen's choice. So the assembly hall is really cool because, well basically for the most part, all these special powers, they pump up the value of the different actions you can do and make them more special. They're, one of the actions you can do, if you ever move a gondola here, you have a choice. You can either fire one of your gondoliers and make three bucks, or you can hire an unemployed gondolier for three bucks. And this is a good way, if you're in a pinch, to get some cash. Because you, you don't need these gondoliers until later in the game. So you could fire them in the early days when you're not using them, and then rehire them later. But it's three to fire and three to hire. If you have an assembly hall, you, if you fire them, you get five bucks and it only costs you one to hire them back. So that, if you have that, that makes this an incredibly powerful space. Let's see, or Jen could get the guild hall. Um, get one victory point every time you produce beads. Now, one of the core things you can do, if you set up a glass foundry, you can start producing glass, these little glass beads. And um, normally, when you, you produce glass beads to make money. And you can see there's a, this, is a, this is the only space on the board. If you go here, the number of factories you have, for every factory you have, you lose two victory points, but you, cr you draw and create one bead of glass. And then after you're done creating anything you want to create and losing points, you can then sell that glass as kind of a set collection. If you can sell three of one color, you make 20 bucks. Two of a color makes 12 bucks. One of a color makes five bucks. So there's a lot of money to be made if you're lucky and you make the right kind of glass. But um, it's just money and you're giving up victory points to do it. But the guild hall gives you a victory point back. So, um, you know, the reason you lose victory points the, thematically is because running a glass factory creates a lot of smoke and a lot of heat, and the neighbors hate it. So that's why you lose victory points. But if you have a guild hall, you can get one of those victory points back. So that makes it much more efficient to make money by making glass. And then the other, ooh, a studio. Now this is interesting. I was saying how you want to have set collection, but say what if, say if you um, went crazy, and you made a whole bunch of glass, and you drew three separates. See, you want three of the same color, so you can sell them for 20 bucks. Three separates? That's just five and five and five. That's lousy. Um, but having a studio lets you convert reds into blues or blues into reds. So suddenly, I've got two of a kind here, and that's 12 bucks. So the studio is pretty cool too. So these are both good if you really want to go into the glass making business. This is good if you just um, you want to go into the hiring and firing business. Let's see here. Now, which one is Jen going to do? 
Ah, we'll see. We'll see. Jen now has a factory. So if she gets another factory, it might make sense for her. Well, let's see, with only one factory, it would only cost her one victory point to run it to get jewel or you know get gems that she could sell. So that's an interesting choice. The studio gives her more of a kind, but she definitely wants to start building more glass factories. And the thing is, see, Jen wishes she had an objective. Because if she knew what her objectives were, she would know whether she wants to build a lot of glass factories, or maybe she doesn't want to build a lot of glass factories. Maybe she wants to do something else. She's not really certain. So you know what? I think she's going to go for the assembly hall, because that's just a more general purpose thing. Whatever her ultimate secret goals might be, being able to hire and fire more efficiently will help her. She might never, I mean, you could win this game, never um, make making any glass at all, just by being a real estate land baron if you've got the right objectives. So Jen, she is going to get an assembly hall. All right, and so that was Jen's turn. Where was it? She moved this gondola over here. She was able to build three tiles. She got a, um, a point, and she got a special power. And now it's my turn. Remember how I was saying this is a, can be a really cutthroat game if you want to be? I'm going to show that right now. Jen's got a super cool power that makes this a really neat um, ability for her. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use it. I mean, I've already got five bucks. It's not like I need the money, but I'm going to come here. I'm going to fire one of my gondoliers, and I'm going to get three more bucks. And I didn't do it because I need the, th the money. I did it because now I have blocked that space. And if Jen wants to use her super powerful assembly hall, she now has this huge traffic jam of gondolas that have to get out of the way. She would have to pay um, nothing to move that, one to move that, two to move that, and then three. So that would cost her six bucks to come here. I have pretty much just completely blocked her off. And she went to great expense to get this, and now I have stopped her. So now, Jen has to, she has a goal of trying to clear all this stuff out so that she can make room so that she can actually use the special power she went and got. And in the meantime, Jen still can't get objectives because these are blocked off too. So you know what I think? I think Jen is, she's going to start trying to, well here's the thing, Jen could move this, you know, do one of these actions. Heck, she could come over here and actually make some glass now if she wants. And now she's regretting not having gotten one of those glass ones. But, um, then I, on my turn, I'll probably jump in here and prevent her from being able to get an objective. So I th And Jen wants to get an objective. She wants to have a goal in mind. So I think Jen's just going to pick this guy up. Whoop. No, no, no. All right. Oh, she wanted to get the money, but I'm blocking that. All right. I've already got that. Where is she going to go? She will... See, she could go here and she could buy a shop. And maybe she'll get lucky and maybe she'll get a gray shop so she could sell to this gray um, customer. Or she could come here, and this is where you activate your shops, but she doesn't have any shops yet. You could come here and get a palace. It would cost her her last two bucks to get a palace, but a palace is worth three points. I think she will just come here, and she's going to pay her last two bucks, and she's going to get a shop. She draws randomly. She's hoping for a gray, hoping for a gray, hoping for a gray, and she got a red shop. That's unfortunate. So she could put this red shop on this island, but there are no red customers, so it won't be able to make any money. But when she builds it, anyway, she will get two points. Now... So she got a shop. It's secret. I don't know what color it is. And now, interestingly, if Jen had more money, she could have spent four bucks, and then that would have let her get any shop she wanted. And so she, I mean, and often, if you have a very specific thing you need, you will pay double to get the, the specific shop you need. But as it was, Jen just hoped for the best and didn't get the best. So that was her turn. Now it is my turn. Let's see. And remember how I want to build? Hey, look at this. I cleared this space out. So not only did I do it to block Jen, but I'm also helping myself. Oh, oh. Actually, wait a second. Maybe Jen doesn't want to get a shop. No, she definitely wants to get a shop because she wants to clear that space out. So anyway, so now I'm going to move over here. Boom! I'm going to pay a buck because I've got tons of money, and I'm going to get me another glass factory. And uh, because I want to have an island with a lot of glass factories. And interestingly, Jen's already built a glass factory here. So maybe I want to put more glass factories on this island so that when I claim it, it'll be worth a lot of points. But, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six more spaces on this island. Uh, well, we'll worry about that in a second. All right, so, um, I, I grabbed a glass factory, it cost me a buck, now it's Jen's turn again. She is totally broke. She has no money at all. The money space is still blocked. So what can she do? Wow. Well, she can't get here. There's still this traffic jam. She could come here, um, and you know it doesn't cost you anything. She's already paid for the labor and the materials and whatnot to build this building. So she could just come here and build it, and hey, you know what? That would clear up this space, but then chances are I'd probably just jump right here, but then Jen could jump in. Mm. So Jen could build, and she'd only be building one building. 
But you know what? She doesn't even money. She can't get any more anyway. What else could she do? She could come over here and activate her one glass factory, but unfortunately she would lose two victory points. She'd get one gem, so she'd lose two victory points, but she'd make five bucks. Then she'd have she'd be back in the cash again. So does she want to do that? Does she want to build, get a couple victory points, and build this shop? At which point probably she'll be giving me the opportunity to get another... But it's the same thing. If, 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 I, if she goes like this, then suddenly, hey, the other objective space is opened up, and it's cleared it for me to get. But if, if, she, if Jen clears that out, then I've got to move this in here to get the objective, and then that lets Jen move in and get... Yeah, she likes that. She's going to move over here, and Jen's going to make some glass. Now, for every fact, you can activate as many factories as you want on as many islands as you want that you own. Jen only owns one, so she's going to activate one. She loses two points, and she now gets to draw one gem because she activated one factory. And she got a green. Now, after you're done, and you can skip that. You don't have to activate any factories if you don't want to. Jen is going to sell this one green she got, and make five bucks. All right, so now she's back in the money. And it's my turn again, and as predicted, boom, I'm gonna give myself another objective. This is my second objective, so it's gonna cost me two bucks now, and I get to draw and keep. Let's see here. D, D, D. So, four points per, let's see, you get four points for each shop on an island selling to gray customers. See, now that's really interesting. There is a uh, gray customer. So this is an island that wants to have gray buildings. And so if, uh, if there's an island that has a lot of gray, gray shops, that could be um, points. But here's the thing. Uh, I don't think this would ever be more than eight points because maybe I would build a gray shop here and maybe Jen would build a gray shop here. But the thing is, when you when you do choose to sh when you choose to sell, you pick one island you're going to sell on, and then you can pick up to three of your shops on that island, one of each color. So it, the game doesn't really reward you for having multiple shops of the same color on an island. So that's why this one is kind of pegged at eight. With more players, it's more likely that more gray shops might appear on an island. Now that's not I mean I could build multiple gray shops on this island, but it's kind of wasteful unless I wanted to get you know. But if I build like four gray shops here, this is worth sixteen points. But I could only ever activate one of them at a time, and they'd only make one buck. So let's see what else. 12 points. You receive 12 points if the number of special buildings, the red buildings, and blue customers, there's a gray customer here, um, e are equal. So now that's an interesting t task. There's one red building. If I could ensure that nobody ever builds another red building on this island and there is one blue customer, boom, 12 points. But that's kind of tricky. And you can imagine that could be very easily accidentally thwarted by other players. So it's a tricky thing to pull off. And this last one, now, this last one has to be on a specific island. Or actually, I, I, it could either be on um, San Teresa or San Matia. If on one of those two islands, at least three... Let's see, you receive 10 points if you have at least three buildings on um, San Teresa or San Matia. And one gondolier on the island. I think this is the one. It's 10 points, and it just gives me a very clear target of building on... Um, oh, I'm sorry, that, that's one island. Oops. Ah. Shoot. Ah. Oh, dear. One-handed. I put the uh, put those in the wrong at the bottom of the wrong pile. These go here. These go on top. There we go. Okay. So, sorry. That's uh, that's that's not that E is not an or. It's saying this island. So I now have a goal. I want to get uh, three buildings on this island, and that works really nicely with this because I could make both of these objectives happen on that island. If I get three buildings and they happen to be three glass factories, then I have the potential to score both of these. But the way these score at the end of the game, not only do I have to achieve whatever the, the obstacle is, or the objective is, but I have to get these characters onto the island. And that's where the gondoliers come in. I need, for every character, I need to have a gondolier who um, will get these people to the island, and they have to res reserve one of the spaces um, that are on that. And that costs money as well. So, by getting these two, these two things, I've given myself several objectives. I want to build a lot of glass factories on this island, and I want to claim two um, dock spaces on that island as well. Alrighty, so I've got a clear goal. Jen is still just, she hasn't gotten any goals yet because I um, keep blocking. But anyway, so now it's Jen's turn, and Jen, whoop, can pay two bucks of the five she just made and get another special power. So I'm getting a bunch of ob objectives, Jen's getting a bunch of special powers. So now she's got two more buildings to build. It'll give her another special power. 
And we'll see how that works out. But you know what? I've shown you a lot of the basics. I've shown you making glass. I've sold you building on the islands. I've talked a bit about the special objectives and stuff like that. Um, although I still haven't claimed any dock spaces. I still haven't sold anything because I don't have any customers that match any shops, etc., etc. So if you'd like to watch some more, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to go to the extended playthrough. Or alternatively, you can hit the other button, go straight to final thoughts, your choice in five, four, three, two, one.